NGS Next Generation Sequencing 30 years after the Singer Chain Termination Method was discovered, many new sequencing techniques beyond the traditional concepts have been developed. Collectively, referred to as the Next Generation Sequencing NGS. The commonality of these new techniques are that they utilize massive parallel sequencing to simultaneously process millions to tens of billions of short segment DNA, each with tens to hundreds of bases. For example, the most commonly used technique currently, the Illumina NGS platform, can be explained in four steps. Sample preparation, cluster generation, sequencing, and data analysis. 1. Sample preparation. Use transposome composed of transposase and transposome to randomly cut the purified DNA sample into short segments while simultaneously introducing adapter segments of different sequences onto the two ends of the cut segments. Then, add primers that are complementary to the adapters to perform reduced cycle PCR to generate double-stranded segments with specially tagged barcodes at both ends. Representing a complementary sequence by star, if the sequence of one strand is oligonucleotide B, barcode 2, sequencing primer SB1, DNA segment to be sequenced, sequencing primer SB2, barcode 1 star, and oligonucleotide A star. The other strand should be oligonucleotide A star, barcode 2 star, sequencing primer SB1 star, complementary DNA segment to be sequenced, sequencing primer SB2 star, barcode 1, and oligonucleotide B. Alternatively, the purified DNA sample could be randomly cut into short segments by ultrasonic waves. Both ends of the short segments are repaired to form blunt ends. Add a deoxynucleotide DA onto each 3' prime end. Use the specially tagged segments with an overhanging deoxynucleotide DT at the 3' prime end of one of the strands to pair with DA and ligate them. This process, also known as the tagmentation reaction, involves bringing in different sequences at both ends of short segments to identify two strands in their orientation, and constructing the fork-like structures at both ends to avoid complementation and re-ligation. It aids subsequent amplification and sequencing reactions. After purification, the sample preparation will be complete. 2. Cluster Generation Microchannel flow cell is a glass plate divided into many lanes or millions of nanowells. The bottom of each lane or nanowell is evenly coated with two oligonucleotides, A and B. A is the complementary sequence of the A star end of one strand, while B is identical to the other end. When the sample is flowed into the flow cells, each strand of DNA separates within the space, and the A star end randomly binds to the oligonucleotide A fixated at the bottom of the well to begin PCR. Oligonucleotide A is used as primer and the bound DNA is used as template. Many complementary strands are simultaneously generated by elongating from the fixated A at the bottom of the wells. Since the other end of the generated complementary strand will be B star and is complement to the oligonucleotide B fixated at the bottom of the wells, when double strand is denatured and the template DNA is washed out, the generated complementary strand's B star end will bind to close by oligonucleotide B at the bottom of the well. Oligonucleotide B is now used as primer, while the complementary strand is used as the second template. Many complementary strands of the second templates are simultaneously generated by elongating from the fixated B at the bottom of the wells. Now that the primers of both strands are fixated to the bottom of the wells, the entire molecule will be bent into a bridge-like shape. And this type of amplification technique is called the bridge amplification. If double strand is denatured and separated, then each strand will be independently fixated to the bottom of the well at the 5' prime end. These strands will not be far from each other, and the other ends of the strands can continue to bind with appropriate oligonucleotides nearby to form another bent bridge shape and elongate complementary strands. 
After many repeated cycles, each segment of DNA would be amplified around it, and the same sequences would form a colony called a cluster. Millions of DNA segments are undergoing amplification in each block of the flow cell at the same time, forming millions of spatially separated clusters. The combination of these clusters is called the DNA sequencing libraries. Cluster generation can also be designed to work on beads covered with reactive agent emulsion. This can be controlled so that each bead would have millions of identical DNA sequences, amplified from a single template DNA, and is called the emulsion-based amplification. 3. Sequencing The double-stranded DNA in the clusters are denatured and separated. The three prime end is protected to prevent degradation, and the connection at oligonucleotide B is excised to wash away the strands elongated from the fixated B, so that only the strands elongated from the fixated A remain at the bottom of the well. Prepare four kinds of deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates (DNTPs). Label four bases with different color fluorophores and protect the three prime OH. To start sequencing, add sequencing primer SB1 to bind to the single strand at the bottom of the well. Using the single strand as template, elongate the sequencing primer with one deoxyribonucleotide. Since its 3' OH is protected, it will not continue to extend. After washing away the deoxyribonucleotides without binding, detect fluorofluorescence to know the base added. Clusters with identical sequence will show identical and apparent fluorescent signals, which increases interpretation accuracy. After detection, excise the fluorescent group and the 3' OH protection group, and conduct the next elongation and sequencing. After multiple repeated cycles, most of the strands sequence will be identified through changes in fluorescent colors. This method of simultaneous synthesizing and sequencing is called sequencing by synthesis. Then, denature the double strand. Wash out the generated strand and add the first half of the complementary sequence 1 star of the barcode 1 at the other end as primer to conduct sequencing by synthesis. This can identify the latter half of 1 star to confirm whether it is the same strand. Denature the double strand, wash out the generated strand, remove protection of the 3' prime end of the single strand at the bottom of the well, and allow it to complementally bind to nearby fixated oligonucleotide B. Use the oligonucleotide B as primer to proceed with small segment elongation. Identify this end's barcode 2 for verification. Denature again and excise this small generated segment. Use oligonucleotide B as primer to elongate a complete strand. Denature the double strand, protect the 3' prime end, excise the template strand at the oligonucleotide A connection, and prepare for the second round of sequencing. At the second round of sequencing, add the complementary sequence SB2 star of sequencing primer SB2 as primer for elongation. Identify most of the sequence of this strand so that the complementary sequence data can be compared to that obtained by sequencing primer SB1. Since millions of DNA clusters have been generated in the flow cells during the last step, sequencing performed during this step is conducted simultaneously to all clusters to obtain millions of base sequences. 4. Data Analysis Use high-performance computer to align and arrange the simultaneously obtained base sequences, and finally piece out the sample DNA's complete sequence. Due to next-generation sequencing's high throughput and high speed, many companies were attracted to invest into the technology to begin the commercialized application, which decreased costs. At present, it would only cost about 1,000 US dollars to complete sequencing of an individual's complete gene set within one day. In addition, the technology has been applied to analyze the intestinal microbiomes and RNA sequences of samples, which has greatly changed the research method of genomes. However, a disadvantage of next-generation sequencing is that each individual sequencing segment only has a length of a few hundred bases and lots of bioinformatics tools are relied on subsequently to piece out a complete sequence. Moreover, if met with large amount of repetitive sequences in sample, it could cause difficulty in detection, interpretation, and piecing out. 